Galaxy's Edge, opening May 31st at Disneyland Resort and August 29th at Walt Disney World Resort.
some identification, traveler. Have you found the resistance spy, Lieutenant? Suspicious behavior may result in interrogation. You're ready to activate, excellent. The antenna on, you want to push it in? Push it in. Good job! Activate. Yay!
Oh, we are so excited for our guests to come and visit. You know, as they're weary travelers and going through the land, you're going to find um, Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. And Docking Bay 7 is really where Cookie Tugs brings his freighters in, and it's got things from all over the galaxy. So they're unique flavors, they're fun flavors, but they're somewhat familiar, but you really won't know what they are. Olga's Cantina is a watering hole for, for people of all ages. And so when you come in, it is a, it's an energetic place, it's fun, it's got some great frozen concoctions. Olga, you know, she sources things from all over the galaxy. So there is many, many drinks, anything from um, specialty beers and wines from around the galaxy, as well as um, great concoctions that are made both for adults and for family friendly. One of my favorite family friendly drinks is a Blue Bantha or the Cliff Dweller, which is a combination of um, fruit juice. For adults, I love the Outer Rim, or the Spear and Calf, which is always a, it's a coffee drink for the morning with a little bit of rum in it, and it's just delightful. Following Lucasfilm through the saga, how can you not want to know about Blue Milk? So Blue Milk, when it was in A New Hope, um, and then subsequently Green Milk in The Last Jedi, we've created that here in the land. So the milk stand, which sits just on the outside of the village, um, on the edge of the First Order, by the way, um, the blue milk and the green milk are plant-based um, offering of rice and coconut milk. Um, and then they have really some unique flavoring profile. They're served frozen and, and we've had great experience with them. So we're really excited to share the first taste of blue and green milk to our guests. The food at Batu. Um, it is brought together by a galaxy of talent. And you can't help but think about how we, when you see the movies, what would the food be like? So for us, it is exotic, yet familiar. It's, um, it, it looks unique, but it's comfortable. So I hope when everybody comes to visit that we bring them to another place, but want them coming back and back again, because there's always gonna be something new. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. oh. oh.
I'm most excited uh, for our guests to feel that they have actually traveled to the outer edge of the galaxy and are standing on the planet Batu. And this is truly an immersive Star Wars experience. To see it is to believe it. To experience it is going to be memorable for everyone. I love immersive experiences. You know, when you walk into Disneyland, you see that little plaque that says, here you leave today, enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. That's what this is. This is entering a different world, immersing yourself fully. And when you immerse yourself in a different world at this level of detail and quality and scale, then you truly feel you've gone somewhere else and escaped. And I think there's real value to that in terms of the experience. And what we're going to do more and more parks and resorts is create those immersive experiences. It's really one of the values that, that Walt infused in Disneyland at the very beginning. The term cast member probably has never been more important and, and more appropriate than it is here. Because when people come here, they need to feel that they are uh, in Star Wars. And the reality that we create for them starts with our cast members and how they interact with our guests. So I think their role is larger here than ever before and more important than, of course, I have such great confidence in them to deliver exactly what we want to deliver for our guests.
Well, I think Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is a new high water mark for Disney. We've been in the business of immersive lands before, and it seems every time that we do a new one, we take it up a notch. I think when you start with the great storytelling and mythology of George Lucas and the Lucasfilm people that have come since George, and then you look at the ambition of our Imagineers, and then you look at the extension of the storytelling that Parks does naturally, you end up with a spectacular land that I think really redefines that guest experience at Disney Parks and Resorts. I hope our guests take away the fact that they can live their own Star Wars adventure here. Our films are great, even our Star Wars based attractions are great, but nowhere else can you be on a planet of Batu, living with the inhabitants, going to a cantina, riding the Millennium Falcon, actually piloting it, and of course, eventually going into a climatic battle with the First Order. Our cast are absolutely critical in getting our guests to believe that they're in Batu. Every one of our cast members has their own backstory, how they got to the land, what they're doing here, and they are putting extra dimension on this, which is really embellishing all the great things that Imagineering has built. Let's see some identification, traveler. Here. The First Order may require your service. All in this outpost, hear me. As you have seen for yourselves, the First Order brings stability and control to what was a disorderly and dysfunctional pile of place. <clears throat> we believe the Resistance has sent a spy here to Batu, no doubt searching for a place to hide. She cannot be operating alone. Someone is helping her. Someone is hiding her. And someone knows just where to find her. I suggest you do as you're ordered. Troopers! Excellent advice. Sir! Have you found the Resistance spy, Lieutenant? Not yet, sir, but we will. I will establish patrols upon every major street within the... The spy island. was tracked here. And if she is here... The resistance could be here. You were sent to find her. But you have failed.
Once again, we will remain open until midnight. Thank you and may your deals go well. Well, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is the most immersive land Disney has ever built, and retail is no exception. We really have something for everyone. Whether you are a casual fan of Star Wars, maybe even experiencing Star Wars for the first time, or for 40 years you've been waiting to live out your own hero's journey. On Batuu, you'll find remnants of the Jedi, the Sith. You'll find local artisans that have crafted toys after the characters and stories you know. You'll also be able to show your own affiliation for the First Order or the Resistance, and everybody loves a good droid. Well, I love the marketplace. It's one of my favorite places to visit. Any world you visit has a bustling marketplace filled with locals, filled with visitors, all looking for goods of that area. So here, actually right here where I'm standing, you can find a creature stall. Everybody loves a good pet shop. These are the most unique pets in the galaxy. If you've ever dreamed of having a Porg or a Kowakian monkey lizard, you may call them Salacious Crumb, or even a Krikna Spider, everything is available at the creature stall. Right across from me, the Toydarian toy maker is making toys handcrafted out of uh, fabric, handcrafted out of wood and metals. Whether your favorite vehicle, the Millennium Falcon, or an X-Wing, you can find those in such unique uh, materials. Even games like Sabacc, those are available. Next door to that, we have Black Spire outf Outfitters, full of tunics, robes, all the official apparel of this world. And then just right down the way, you can find our marketplace filled with things of Black Spire Outpost. So Black Spire Outpost, Batu, all the goods and gear that celebrate the place we're in. Droid Depot. Everybody could use a good droid. The droid is the ultimate sidekick for anyone ready to have an adventure living in a Star Wars world. At our Droid Depot, you can actually visit a working droid workshop where you can build your own droid. You can choose to build an astromech droid, whether an R series or a BB series. You choose from a variety of parts, you get to choose colors, and you construct it at your own droid station. Once finished, you'll be able to see that droid come to life. We're gonna activate it, and right in front of you, you'll see the dome move for the first time, you'll see lights activate it, and you'll hear the personality. If you wanna change the affiliation because you're with the First Order, you can actually change your droid affiliation to match whatever adventure you're having today. But in addition to building droids, there's droids from all price points, apparel that celebrates the building of droids, and all kinds of droid toys you can only find at the Droid Depot. Well, on Batu, I've been told there is a secret workshop run by Savi. Savi's hand-built lightsabers. And if you know anything about Star Wars, a lightsaber is the signature element of so many characters. The opportunity to live your own hero's journey can't be fulfilled without a lightsaber. So by a visit to Savi's, you get to choose your story, choose your adventure. Once inside the chamber, you'll actually get to choose from an assortment of color kyber crystals. That will be the heart of your lightsaber. And then step by step, you'll be able to build, construct your own lightsaber and watch that lightsaber brought to life um, through the force. I can't wait to go. No visit to Black Spire Outpost is complete without a visit to Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. Doc Ondar has very eclectic tastes and is a collector of fine goods and interesting items throughout the galaxy. So once inside Doc Ondar's, you can expect to find remnants of the Jedi, of the Sith, of characters you probably know, even lightsabers. The most interesting thing for me at Doc Ondar's are the holocrons. Holocrons are ancient keepers of wisdom. You can find holocrons from the Jedi, holocrons from the Sith. And once you, you are able to tune into your internal force, you can bring that holocron to life and learn messages from those that have come before us. And with kyber crystals, you can actually expand that and learn even more. So much to find at Doc and Doc and Dar himself can actually be found in the shop. He's haggling, he's keeping track of sales, he's constantly looking for new goods. You may even be able to barter with Doc and Dar. 
what a great experience right here in Black Spire Outpost. For me, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is a journey that's lasted over six years. Um, many twists and turns and adventures along the way. To see it come to life, to see the product and see guests shopping, it is emotional. Especially to see kids playing with the toys, building droids, crafting lightsabers. These are dreams, visions that start on a white piece of paper and to see them come to life with so much color, so much energy, and to see smiles on so many faces just is, is unlike anything I can describe to you today, but it is an amazing experience to see this come to life today. My favorite item changes all the time, but I am absolutely fascinated with what we built at Savi's hand-built lightsabers. It's more than just a lightsaber. It is an experience. It's an experience that we've seen on screen as Ahsoka built a lightsaber. We've seen Luke activate a green lightsaber, but the inner child in me and all the guests around us to be able to have that personal experience, step by step, build your own, hear from those that have come before us in a space that is so uniquely Star Wars, that is unlike anything you can do anywhere else in the world. So special.
Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is, in a word, epic. It is the most authentic, the most immersive. It is the biggest single land expansion we've ever done in Disney Parks history, and it completely immerses you in the world of Star Wars. For as large as Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is, we did not lose sight of every single detail, every prop, every texture, every color, the flavors, the textures. All of it is intended to immerse you in the world of Star Wars. And to do that, we handcrafted the entire place. Every square inch of this is hand-carved, hand-painted, really brought to life by the hand of the artist to make it an authentic and immersive Star Wars experience. When our guests come to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, I hope they feel like they've walked straight into Black Spire Outpost on the planet Batu, a real Star Wars location filled with real Star Wars characters and real Star Wars adventures, and that they feel that invitation to not be just a spectator, but if they want to, to become an active participant in those stories and in those adventures, and to really live their own Star Wars story. One of the adventures I'm most excited about is Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. As you can see right behind me, we have the fastest ship in the galaxy. And for the first time, you and your flight crew are going to be able to take the controls of that flying hunk of junk and take it on an intergalactic joyride. When Disneyland first opened its doors, it gave our guests an opportunity to do something they'd never had before, to step into these worlds of fantasy and imagination. And Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is a, a, an extension of that same idea, that same vision that Walt had about giving guests an opportunity to believe that they were having these real experiences and to believe that they were becoming a part of their favorite worlds. I hope that if Walt were around today, he'd be proud of what we accomplished. Black Spire Outpost is a remote trading port on the edge of wild space. Back in the old sub light speed days, it was a necessary stopping off point for fuel and provisions. But now that hyperspace has kind of left it in the dust a little bit, it's become a haven for those who didn't want to be in the mainstream, the, the smugglers, the bounty hunters. Those folks looking to crew up for some adventure into wild space. Basically, it's all the interesting people, and it's a great stepping off point for new Star Wars stories, including our Star Wars story. If you leave the outpost and go through the forest, you're going to find the resistance. And this is where they're encamped, trying to rebuild, trying to recruit new, new recruits to join the cause and stand up against the First Order. And in the remains of some ancient ruins from some long forgotten civilization, that's where we step off on our second big anchor attraction experience, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. It was almost five years ago that we started thinking about building a place where people could come and live out their Star Wars dreams and kind of fulfill that 40 years of dreaming. And when I look upon this today and I think about what the amazing accomplishment it is and all the partners that help bring it to life, whether our, our Imagineers or our partners at Lucasfilm and ILM or the other partners from literally all across the globe who contributed to bringing these dreams to life, it's truly an amazing and humbling experience. I love being able to see it when we bring someone into the land for the first time and see it fresh through their eyes. Sometimes they laugh, sometimes they cry but no one has come away feeling less than impressed by the accomplishments that this amazing team has made. So it is, I hope that our guests and our fans have that same reaction. This outpost is in danger from the First Order. The Resistance needs your help. Now more than ever. Thank you for joining the cause. And may the Force be with us. I've been waiting my whole life for this. Junk. You ready? Are you?
Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. Did it work? Good. Now get a move on. There's a clear path to... This outpost is in danger from the First Order. Thank you for joining the cause. And may the Force be with us. Galaxy's Edge, opening May 31st at Disneyland Resort and August 29th at Walt Disney World Resort.